No. See, don't go to Turkey. See, Christmas is it's not, all over the it world. Is it's not, not what you thought it was. And it's actually, the Russians will tell you St. Nicholas was a Russian Greek Orthodox. This was Greek, but they'll, you know, it was a Greek church, Greek Orthodox, but they will say he was a Russian saint, not a Greek saint. Uh, you will also see, you know, you'll see St. Nicholas predominantly in Christmas, uh, in their Christmas Greek Orthodox celebration, because they have lots of little Nicholas dolls. Ah, yeah, that's true, huh? Yeah. So St. Nicholas was famous for his generous gifts to the poor, in particular to these three impoverished daughters of a pious Christian with dowry so that they would have to would not have to become prostitutes. I noticed that there's three. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wise men. And he's re very religious from an early age and devoted his life entirely to Christianity in Europe, more precisely, the Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, and Germany. He's still portrayed as a bearded bishop in canonical robes. Yeah, see, they, I told you that's what they wore, the big flowing things. Up. Uh, okay, have you ever, okay, here we go. Look at pictures of Cossacks from that time period. They have the big flowing robes. The uh, Oh, that's true, they do. St. Nicholas usually has um, the robes, he doesn't have the pants. And the riding boots, mm -hmm. the gloves, and the hat like this, except it's put over on the, exactly. you know, like that. So, see? Does it mean something different if it's from one side or the other? Uh, yeah, I wonder. whether you're going to get bopped or not, I think so. Yeah, they do that, you know, because you do that in some of, you know, based on an earring or a color. Like, in, in, even in Japan, they do that. Yeah. Depending on what you wear, it signifies whether you're available or not. Yeah, like, I love this. In 1807, in, in 1087, the Italian city of Barbary, Wanting to end the profitable pilgrimage energy at the time of Mount, an expedition to locate the tomb of the Christian saint and procure his remains. The record was desiccated by the, the, desecrated by the Italian soldiers and the spoils of his relics taken to Barbary where they are kept today. Well, basically it means they were, they were uh, licensed grave robbers. Ah. Called an archaeologist today. Ah. Um, a basilica was constructed the same year to store the loot in the area became a pilgrimage site for the devout, thus justifying the economic cost of the expedition. He was later claimed as a patron saint of many diverse groups from archers, sailors, and children to pawnbrokers. He's a patron saint of both Amsterdam and Moscow, which is what I told you. See, now, we just keep expanding, don't we? But they said numerous parallels have been drawn between St. Nicholas and the figure of Odin, a major god among the Germanic people prior to Christianity. Since many of these elements are unrelated to Christianity, there are theories regarding the pagan values of these things. Uh, Germanic people are Christianized and retain elements of their indigenous traditions, serving various forms and such and such. such. But uh, Odin was built, or built or, you know, big fat, and it was referred to by many names. Some of which described his appearance and functions and so forth. Are, oh, are, uh, let's see, Longbar, meaning long beard, and Jonar, Yule figure. Wow. And, yeah. Children would place their boots filled with carrot straw or sugar near the chimney for Odin's flying horse, Sepnar, oh. to eat. Odin would then reward these children for their kindness by replacing Sepnar's food with candy or gifts. The practice still survives in Germany, Belgium, and Leatherman's ship. Can associate with St. Nicholas since Christian days. In other countries were replaced by a hanging of stockings at the chimney. Isn't that something? I think the stockings are better because I can only imagine if you put your boots out with food in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would make, first of all, mess. It would be pretty stinky. I know. We got Dutch. But maybe the horses didn't care. We got, we got Dutch folklore now. Ah. Because in the Netherlands, such as in Belgium and Luxembourg, St. Nicholas often called the good saint is aided by helpers. And, um, commonly known as Wart Piet, Piet in Dutch, or Black Peter, or Pierre Foutard in French. Oh, his feast on December 6th came to be celebrated in many countries with the giving of gifts. However, in the Netherlands, the Dutch celebrate on the evening of December 5th with a celebration called um, Pachtus Saban. Okay. Deutschland. <laughs> uh, in the Reformation in the 16th and 17th centuries, um, Europe. Many Protestants and others changed the gift bringer to the Christ child or Christ kindle. That's Christ oh, child and Chris Kindle. Christ, Christ, Christ kindle is like Chris Kringle. Chris, 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 Chris Kringle. Kringle. Isn't that amazing? 
And the date for giving gifts changed from December 6th to Christmas Eve. You realize we're doing the most god-awful big explanation ever done on Christmas and Santa Claus? But you know, it's like everybody takes it and then, because, oh yeah, they used to move to and create their own celebration. We're giving you, we're telling you why, how, and stuff, but here we go. I loved it. Tradition holds that St. Nicholas, St. Claus, you know, Chris, uh, They arrived by Spain? Yeah, right. He a from, from Spain in mid November, carrying a book that contains notes on all children in the child yeah. has been good, naughty or nice. Naughty or nice list. During the subsequent three weeks, St. Nicholas is believed to ride a white gray horse over the rooftops at night, delivering gifts throughout the chimneys to well behaved children while the naughty children risk being caught by Santa Claus aides that carry jute bags and willow reins. You can catch what they did with the willow. But if actually if it was in Mesopotamia or Rome, then ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> So, I noticed though. We just hear I noticed though that they've had reindeers and they have horses, depending on who they're just talking about. Yeah. In contrast to Santa Claus, Santa Claus is an elderly, stately, and serious man with a white beard, uh, uh, with, with white well, hair and a long beard. You know why sometimes he's probably horses versus reindeer? Because they didn't know what reindeer was. That's right. <laughs> so they knew what horse was. Reindeer came from the north because when they all settled upon the fact that Santa Claus. Um, came from the north. Came from the north. And you know, so, somebody did break so I love that. If Santa Claus came from Spain, which is not the north, I know. From the south, then. Right? Yeah, well, no, he, he came from. I actually, I remember yeah. seeing this when I was young, the celebrations. They still they still do. Well, when I was young, they did the celebrations of, of uh, Santa Claus, of, 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 of St. Saint, uh, Nicholas coming ashore from a boat. Really? Yeah, I did remember seeing it. Um, uh, you know, back I, I think I think it was done in Spain, Portugal, and, and in other places like that. But they did it. Uh, but uh, Santa Claus wears a long red cape over a traditional white bishop's up, and you know, uh, you know that outfit that the church knows they the wear. Bishop. Uh, dons a red miter and holds a gold cutter crochet, a long ceremonial shepherd staff with a fancy curl top. He carries a big book that tells where each children have been naughty or nice. Netherlands and Belgium, the character of Santa Claus, known as Kisterman, the Christ Man, or Pierre Noël. Pierre Noël. Now we know Noël. The first Noël. The first Noël. That's uh, Father Christmas in French. Although for kids, Santa Claus is predominantly gift given in the Netherlands in December, 30% of the population only give presents on Santa Claus Day. Christmas is used by another fifth of the Dutch pre They get lots of presents in the Netherlands, folks. What? You know, 20% they get like they're divided up like three different times you can get presents in, in the Netherlands. In Belgium, presents are given to children only, but to almost all of them on Santa Claus Day. On Christmas Day, everybody receives presents, but only with Claus's help. Mm. But often without it. Yeah. Yeah. And in Scandinavia, they do it a little bit different. Because in the 1840s, in, Elf, in Nordic folklore, yes, they, they did do that, right? Yeah. Uh, Tomte Arnisse started to deliver the Christmas presents in Denmark. The Tomte was portrayed as a short bearded man dressed in gray clothes and a red hat. You know, I went to school in Denmark. I don't remember seeing that. I know, but I saw it. Oh. I'm older. What happened was... Oh, you know what? I might have seen him, but I didn't realize he was supposed to be... You didn't know what that was, so... Yeah. Um, this new version of the age-old four-floor creature was obviously inspired by the Santa Claus traditions that were now spreading to Scandinavia. Well, Hans Christian... Does Hans Christian... Hans Christian Anderson, Anderson. One of the most famous Danish authors. I'm trying to remember. Did yeah. he have something about Santa Claus? Oh, yeah. It, it basically, it was... Uh, you know, it was it was he he did it with his his people. You know that they did their version, and that's how it was done. Mm. So by the end of the nineteenth century, the tradition had spread to Norway and Sweden. Which actually, I'm surprised it took that long because you know how close Denmark is to Norway and Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> Replacing the Yule goat because the people in Sweden always take the ferries over to Denmark to drink. <laughs> and I, they, I, refer, I, would, I, I like it to refer to him as the Yule goat. Even well, because they have goats up there. Yeah, because it didn't have. It's, it's got to be what was in the country. Mm -hmm. and that, there was a yule, but it keep coming back to these words. Yule. Uh, oh, you know what? Santa there is a. Oh, you know what? There was a little short period now with the yule goat going. Yeah. 
Jesus. Remember, it, it, it's a small world. It's a small world. <laughs> go look in a small world at Christmas time if you go to that Disney, is, and you're going to see all of these things right here. So the same thing happened in Finland, which actually is for the north, but there's a more human figure um, retained the Yule Goat name. But even though the tradition of the Yule Goat as a bringer of presents is now all but extinct, a straw goat is still a common Christmas decoration in all of Scandinavia. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't remember. Did they have and then we're going to get to Fa Father Christmas, which basically is by Leslie Briscoe. You know, oh, really? With, remember uh, uh, Albert Fanny and uh, Father Christmas? No. I mean, he's, he's dressed up as Father Christmas and all the people dancing around. I don't remember that. So, but, uh, okay. but he dates back as far as the 17th century in Britain, and pictures of him survived from that era, portraying him as a shawly, well nourished, bearded man dressed in a long green fur lined robe. Which is basically what they Father Christmas does not dress in a red outfit. We did that. We we did that for books and movies, folks. Oh really? He typified the spirit of the good. Oh, church. is that because he's Father Christmas? So he's in green because of Christmas tree. That's right. Uh, and he's reflected as the ghost of Christmas present in Charles Dickens' Festival Christmas classic, a Christmas Carol. A great genial man in a green coat lined with fur who takes Scrooge through the bustling streets of London on the current Christmas morning, sprinkling the essence of Christmas to the happy. Go look at the older versions of A Christmas Carol, and you're going to see some differences between the European version and the American versions. Oh, really? Carol. European versions are all Father Christmas. The European American versions tend to have a little bit reddish outfit. Ah. Yeah. That's, okay. that's that. Yeah, and if you're wondering, if you're watching one of the ones and you're like, why is he in a green outfit? That's because he was Father Christmas. Yeah, and it, right? uh, I thought Scrooge, a colorized version of the original illustration by John Lee's made for the Charles Dickens classic A Christmas Carol, 1843. They basically drew the figure of a green coat. And uh, what happened was, because it, it was just a colorized thing, you were then allowed to adapt it because the English knew it was green, but the Americans look at the Christmas Carol and figure, well, it's Santa Claus. Oh, you know what? And during that time, green and red on a black and white screen was really similar in color tone. So, they? yeah. So, yeah. if you would assume that. Uh, That's if you're watching it on TV. But after, you know, after they went through these different representations, they merged the gift giver from church history and folklore, notably St. Nicholas and Santa Claus, mm -hmm. merged with the British character of Father Christmas to create the character known to Britons and Americans as Santa Claus. Which we already, if you listen, Santa, you know, Santa Claus, Chris Kringle, mm -hmm. St. Nicholas, they all are the same person, but in different areas. So, mm he's -hmm. a busy person. How can you be so busy? Well, you fly on your goats, you fly on your bison, you fly on your horses. He was cloned. He was cloned. <laughs> you know, he could, he, so he could do like Samantha on Bewitched. And then just go for it. I know what, he must have frozen time. Yeah. That would be, he just stops time, you know, with the early version. Basically, um, he was an early paladin from the Jewish religion. Basically, he was able to stop time. Because how else could he do all that in one night, yeah. right? Um, okay, uh, basically in British colonies and North America later, the British and Dutch versions of the gift givers merged. The Washington Irving story, Santa Claus was Americanized into Santa Claus, but lost his bishop's apparel. Was um, First pictures a thick-bellied Dutch sailor with a pipe in a green leather coat. Oh! Yeah. Go, ho, ho. With his fur hat off to his side, his little pipe, and his sailor's outfit. So basically, it was a satirical comic. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but. Uh, and they would not be wearing bright red if they were a sailor, would no, they? No, no. <laughs> in, uh, in, in 1821, uh, the New Year's, uh, a book in New Year's Presidents of the Little Ones from 5 to 12 is published in New York. It contains old Santa Claus. An anonymous poem describing an old man on a reindeer sleigh bringing presents to children. Mm. Isn't that something? Basically, uh, from they basically from this came uh, a visit from Saint Nicholas. Bit it was the night before Christmas uh, in New York Sentinel in 1823. Anonymous again. 
Isn't that something? Many of his attributes are established in this poem, such as riding in a slate that lands on a roof, entering through the chimney, and having a full bag. St. Nick's described as being chub, chubby, plump, and a jolly red old elf, and a little round belly that shook when he laughed, and a bowl full of jelly, in spite of which the miniature sleigh and tiny reindeer still indicate that is physically diminutive. The reindeers were named Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blixen, Dunder, and Blixen came from the Dutch words for thunder and lightning, which were later oh, really? came from the more German sounding Donner and Blixen. Oh. Isn't that amazing? Didn't think there was this much history about this stuff, folks. We're, no. I know. So as the years passed, Santa Claus moved into being a large, heavy set person. In other words, he had a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> Yeah, he basically, because he's eating all this stuff. He ate the all the cookies. Yeah. Right? Oh, they, everybody, like, okay. Uh, in, 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 I know, I, I'm Deutschlander. We used to leave my, I mean, we left Pfeiffer Nutz, mm -hmm. which is, we would really, which is basically a uh, little, it, it's a combination between Jewish stuff and uh, and German, because they would be, basically, as my father said, you could kill a person throwing a Pfeiffer Nutz and hitting him in the head. They were hard. They're hard. And they were hard because they were meant to last through the winter. Through the winter, and basically you would leave them for Saint Nicholas, and that's why you left drinks out, you know, like uh, like hot chocolate or milk or something, so that you could dip the Pfeiffer noose. Oh. So that's you know that's how that came about. I love Pfeiffer noose. They're very god awful expensive. They are. They, they are. Yeah. So anyway, as the years passed, um, one of Remember we said Santa Claus became heavy said part of it is is remember the name Thomas Nass which you mentioned before the American cartoonist and he was one of the first that illustrated Santa and this was in 1863 it appeared in Harper's Weekly and in that illustration oh actually January 3rd 1863 he thought it was after Christmas yeah instead of before yeah so that may be one of the reasons why they think Santa Claus came from the North Pole yeah and, and like I said um Basically, we have uh, the, basically Santa Claus and his works by George Webster, who wrote that Santa Claus's home was near the North Pole, became well known. A boy from Canada writing in children's magazine said, "If we didn't live so very far from the North Pole, I would ask Santa Claus to bring me a donkey because that's what they would have had in other country." Remember, you couldn't write about something you'd never known about. They mm -hmm. didn't know about. Um, reindeer until somebody had actually went to that part of the world and mm -hmm. basically wrote about it. So, but uh, oh. uh, actually, here we go. The idea of a wife for Santa Claus may have been the creation of America. 